Hello, creative adventurers, first time visitors and armchair travelers. I am so excited that you're here this week. I have been busy the last two weeks working in my art studio with the reorganizing and decluttering so I can move forward to Studio B to get that organized and set up to begin implementing all the wonderful ideas and plans I have for future creative projects. I spent this last week, however, in my kitchen. I have had so much fun putting a creative boho twist on this kitchen cabinet. I had been looking at this for quite a while. I had originally painted it in some pretty bright colors, but I want you to see what I did. It's really fun. And I think it's a project that many of you will find lots of places that you could do this technique too. And right after the big reveal, just stay tuned because the complete tutorial is here available for you to watch, experiment with, and find those places and spaces in your house that you could put a creative twist on, add some color, add a little sparkle and life into it. Because our living spaces are important. They're an expression of ourselves. And I really want to encourage you to make the jump sometimes, to try something new. Go for it. It's just painful and you can paint over it. So let's go take a peek now. Well, here we are in my kitchen and as I promised, here's a look at the new cabinets that I did. I really like how these turned out. It gave me the punch of color that I was wanting on this end of the room and it looks really nice at night and during the day. It makes me happy. This was obviously uh, an addition, a handmade cabinet that someone made and so it's really got the homemade look to it and I just really didn't get my panties in a twist over things not being perfect. It, it let me relax. Isn't this cool? This is down in the bottom. This cup was left here. I've kind of just left it there too. And also the floor, um, the old vintage original flooring that was in the kitchen. When we went through the house, every room had several layers of carpet and shag rugs. It was really kind of cool uh, when we lifted it all up and put in brand new carpet throughout the house. I'll show you more of that when I give you more tours of the house. I love my color. And stay tuned for the tutorial. These are a sample of the chalk paints that I enjoy using. Of course, there's the Queen, Annie Sloan, her chalk paints. Most of you have heard of Annie. I also absolutely love the Waverly, uh, it's pla from Plaid Company. So I think they are just fine and those are very inexpensive um, to use and they hold up really well, easy to work with. Now this is the Amy Howard At Home uh, One Step Paint. This is the customized paint that I get at Ace Hardware. I'm not sure where else you can get these, but I really love these paints. I am 
going to do some stenciling and some creative painting on the doors that I just took off because I want to be able to work on a flat surface. I think it would just be a little bit better. And besides this, uh, I'm going to be doing some decorative work along the side and the door came right here. So it would have prohibited me from the effect that I want to do on the sides. Let's get started. I am going to do some sanding. The areas right here where I took off the doors. I'm going to sand this down. I'll touch it up again with the orange chalk paint. And that's what I'm working with today. I'm working with chalk paints. That's some of my favorite types of paint to work with that I can just go in without a lot of sanding or prepping or stripping of anything. I can just go in and paint over almost anything. Chalk paint is one of my BFFs. In an upcoming episode, I'm going to teach you how to make your own chalk so you can customize your colors so you are not stymied by the really cool chalk paint companies out there but sometimes you want a different color and this way you can customize it with something you may have already uh, used or leftover paint you have so let's get started Okay, you can see over here that I accidentally pulled up some of the paper here, and that really truly is not a big deal. See, you probably didn't even notice this one. The paper got munched right in there. But let me show you a quick little fix. And of course, it helps if you are using a, a pattern like this that isn't real, you know, like a checkerboard would, you'd have to match up the, um, the lines in a checkerboard, but this is kind of cool. Let's take this one off of here. Now watch this. I'm just going to tear off a little piece and it's, it hides better if you do have like a, uh, jagged edge. So let's get her on here. Okay. 
and just let that dry and it really will not be noticeable at all. And I can see that's a, the blue right in there. So I'm just gonna take a little piece of this blue. Now, you won't even be able to notice this when it's all dry. And I will be back as soon as this has all been um, Mod Podged on. Mod Podge. Isn't that a fun, fun one to say? It's fun as unicorn spit. All right, I'll see you in a few.
For those of you just learning how to work with stencils, when you buy a, a stencil like the one I have, and I will put the link in the comments, you'll see that it has little marks along the side so you can mark your walls in case you were doing a pattern all the way down your wall. That would give you the chance to line it up correctly so you keep your pattern even. So what I'm going to do is find my center. I'm going to measure 33, oh god, 33 inches, I have to think. That would be 16 and a half. So, make a teensy little mark there. Fourteen inches, seven inches. So I found my center. I decided I'm going to do the stencils like this. One upside down and one right side up. Okay, I'm lining it up right here. Notice how I'm just using a tiny bit because I can always gather it and use it. And I'm keeping my putty knife, my palette knife rather, pretty straight when I drag across. A creamsicle, doesn't it? Voilà. 